This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plan, celebrating 76 years of providing Tennesseans with high quality health coverage at an affordable rate. Visit FBHP.com to learn about their story and their history in Tennessee. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. So pleased to be joined by the head coach of your Tennessee Titans, Mike Vrabel. Welcome. Welcome. It's good Thanks to be for here. Having me. All right, yeah. so let's set the parameters right away. We're taping the July 4th show, but it's obviously June. Yes. Because our offices are closed on July the 4th. So, Mike, play along with us here. If this really were July 4th, where would you and the Vrabel family be right now? What are you doing the week of July 4th? This year? Yes. Mm-hmm. I think we'll be in Utah. Nice. Yeah, I think we'll be down in, uh, in Park City taking the uh, celebration down Main Street. It's a parade. You see the kids and candy and. Is that a place you have gone frequently with Jen? And not in the summer. Not in the summer. I like it in the winter, but I'm going to try it out in the summer. I heard it's nice out there. Are you guys ski people? Do you ski? I do. Really? Yeah. Mike Vrabel. I never would have pegged you as a skier. Yeah. Well, your wife's an athlete. Well, you put goggles on, a helmet. Sure. Nobody bothers you. You put music in and... Just cruising down the slopes. Nobody bothers you. you. Nobody knows who you could be next to. The biggest celebrity, whoever you think the biggest celebrity is, and you would never know because the goggles, the helmet, the snow. Who's the biggest celebrity you have ha- you have encountered out there? Um, God, I don't know. I was going to think you'd say like Robert Redford because he's no, a big Utah I mean, guy. The Sundance thing, I, I really don't even know. My buddy Thomas Connor over at the corner pub, <laughs> <laughs> over, over at the corner store. <laughs> That the base guy. of Park City. That is my guy. <laughs> I want you to explain something, though, because this is the only downtime of the year fully for the NFL. The last week in June and the first really two weeks in July, that's all that's left that's completely carved out to where you're alone. Is it hard for you to shut it down for those three weeks? No, It's not hard. It's what What's hard is that you have to hope that what you've tried to instill with the players that you've had here for the off-season program, that they go and they can continue that. I guess that's my only – the biggest concern that I have as, as a coach in this league is those are the most – five most critical weeks of the off-season. It's not the, the March to April window. It's not the start of OTAs. It's that end of mini camp to the beginning of training camp because I feel like we're continuing to work. We're doing good. I think guys are getting in shape and getting stronger and having gains – but what happens after that? And I know that a lot of them will, but you know, how do we maintain that, that self-motivation throughout that five-week window? Is that something you've had to learn how to do, though, is to kind of let go during that time period? I mean, you're not a first-time head coach anymore. You've kind of learned the cadence of the season. Did you have to learn how to really shut it down and let, let it be? Uh, probably. I mean, we have the rookies for a couple weeks after, so that'll be good. I think they'll really – be able to settle down and try to take a deep breath here and just focus on their conditioning, their strength, and, and getting them ready uh, for the training camp. We'll get them out of here, and then Chick will finish his program, his rookie development program that, that he does so um, well at. Uh, let these guys get away. And, you know, I think a back and forth, so it'll be, you know, it'll be good. I'll spend some time with the rookies here for a little bit, and then, you know, we'll all get away. People hear you mention Chick. You're talking about Chick Elijasi, who – Runs all of your player programming, and I guess his technical title is he's the player development director? Yep, player engagement. Player engagement. And uh, Why is a, he so good at what he does? Well, he has a staff, and, and part of that group is, is um, James Mitchell, Mitch, and Dr. Sheila Peters. Um, they, they work extensively with the rookies, not just the rookies, but that's where the, their main focus is right now. Um, it, it just a really quick, you know, they, we always try to add points of contact for our players, you know, whether they're comfortable with Chick or Mitch or Stretch or myself, their position coach, Todd or Frank, it doesn't matter. Just somebody that they can come to. If something's going on, hey, I need this, then we go through the channels of trying to get them that. And it could be a number of different things. But Chick understands what it is that we demand of our players, uh, what we ask of them, what they're going to need to survive and excel uh, as a player uh, on this uh, on this team, on the field, off the field, uh, he has a really good grasp of it. So, you know, we're lucky to have him. 
those rookie programs, I guess, is it's something that's relatively new to the league in terms of they're getting more extensive every year the way that you're trying to educate them, not only about football stuff and the business of the NFL, but there's a lot of life components to that too, right? Yeah, the, and Dr. Sheila reminded the rookies that there used to just be a rookie symposium. You would just show up two days somewhere, they'd hammer out 10 hours a day of information and all the different things, and now they've put it back here with directors and a, and a planned out thing so we have a schedule when they come in each day you know what they're doing with the football and then what they're doing each day uh, in, in the rookie development program with Chick so that could be a former player that could be um, a second a few second year players that could be veteran players financial um, financial ad advice um, NFL PA benefits all these things that go through um, you know, our community relations, making sure that they have an understanding of what's going to be asked of them throughout the season and, and things that we can help them with. Because they are just like people coming out of college in May. They're starting their first job. Yeah. And it can be overwhelming. Well, there's a lot of questions. Their families are asking them a lot of questions. And sometimes they don't always, most of the time, don't have the answers to, to what training camp is going to look like, what tickets are going to look like, when do we stay, the hotel, the driver's license, the when we go to London this year. There's passports that some of these guys don't have passports. And so Chick and his staff, you know, with, with Jeb and John Albertson, they go about finding ways to, to provide them and get them the, the stuff that they need, driver's license, apartments, and, and all those different things. Have you seen the fruits of that labor translate to success on the football field, translate to maybe easier career transitions? Well, I think comfort level. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we try to provide as much um, support as we can off the field so that when they get here uh, to work or they get to the practice field or the meetings that they're not thinking about something else that needs to get taken care of, they can focus on football. And those things still exist, Amy. We know that through our coaching staff, our players, everybody in this building, we go through life. You know, we have life experiences, and it doesn't stop whether you go on the radio, whether you go on TV, whatever it is. And so we try to help those players get through that and manage that and then, you know, therefore make them better teammates and, and hopefully more productive. You've put a big emphasis in your support staff, and we're going to talk to you about a lot of different components of that because obviously the coaching stuff is what we talk about the most, but there are so many other staff members, whether it's nutrition, whether it's people in the equipment room, whether it's trainers, whether it's just people who are around to help this football team be successful. That's something that we've really seen you kind of put a priority on, especially in the last couple of years, bulking that group up a little bit. Why is that something that's been so important to you? Well, one, the respect is, is critical, that our players have respect for everybody in this building that has a role, that has a job to, to help them do the best job that they can at playing football. And so I expect that respect to each and every person whether that's in the cafeteria which we all know having been here uh, as long as we all have that didn't used to look like that at all and right. and we have a first class facility that that feeds our players exactly what their dietary um, restrictions are or aren't um, the, f the the friendliness the the cleanliness all these things that that allow our players to come in there hang out outside of the locker room, outside of a meeting room, the equipment room. Um, you know, I would just – those are simple things that I asked our players to show those people w respect, that they're not there just to pick your stuff up. They're there to, to provide you with the equipment, the laundry service, but they're not sit there to, to, to pick up after you and, and be your housekeeper. And then the training room and the nutritionist that you mentioned and so many different other pieces to this puzzle because there is a lot. You know, there's a lot going on. They, you know, it's big family, small families, kids travel from all across the country to be here. So, you know, the more people that we can have here that, uh, you know, help them do their job and help us all, you know, come to work focused and ready to go is important. Mike and Jen Vrabel have two sons in their 20s who are athletes. Yep. How much do you think that has helped you in your time developing as the head coach of the Tennessee Titans? knowing that you understand not only that generation and not only athletes of that generation, but the different things that they are going through than you went through back in the 1990s? Uh, I think it's probably helped. 
um you know i mean it's like you live every day with you know these guys are same age i know what you know i mean it's like carter's got long hair tattoos and earrings just like a lot of our (laughs) players it's like i get it you know and so um it but i also probably wasn't as good as i should have been early on with with my own kids and trying to be instead of being coach or instead of being dad it's like more coach than dad and trying to find that that balance but i do think having you know kids in that same age group of the ones that are going to be meeting with us here you know when they come back for training camp um i think it helps i think it helps to understand you know there's relationships there's families there's disagreements there's all these different things that go on that you try to work through and talk to them about and uh, continue with the mental performance, the mental recovery uh, that we talk about in this game and the expectations that we all have and the high expectations. And, you know, you, I believe in the mental performance side of things. I, I think that was a big reason of Carter having to – being able to recover from where he was early in the season of, you know, you go baseball, man. It's up and down. There's slumps and it's a game of failure. And I struggle with that just watching as, as, a, as a dad. But – he stuck with it. He worked, you know, worked the, the skills that, that he had been trained with and worked with and been able to fight through that early season and then finished, you know, really strong. And that's something that, you know, Tennessee Tech and that, that Coach Braga alluded to. He said the way that you finished, he's like, I, I, we, we noticed that. We looked at that. So, you know, I try to remind our players, like, hey, this is the whole package that we're trying to develop. What's Mike Vrabel, the dad, like watching his kid play a sport, whether it be football or baseball, because you've got both. What do you, are you a mover? Are you quiet? Are you stationary? You've got all, I'm be- all different I, types. I, I, I'm probably best, if you want to know where I'm best at, Amy, I'm best further away. Yeah. The closer I get, the, the more fidgety <laughs> and amped up I get. I, I, I don't want to be a part of that game. I, I don't. And, and I need to, unfortunately, remove myself behind left field with my little grill. I got my little Blackstone out there. I make hot dogs for fans. So that removes me from the game and I can watch and I can enjoy it and not get so close to it. She's going to find out. It's the most, when, when your girls are playing whatever sport they're playing, as a parent, it's awful. It's, it's so much worse than when I played 100 years ago or when Mike played in the NFL. I mean, I, I think you would agree. Watching your kids, watching my son play piano or – Watch it. I mean, anything like that, you are just tight as a drum. Yeah. Because there's uh, nothing you can do. No, you just have to try to enjoy it, find a space where you can enjoy it. And uh, because they they feel that, I think they see that, they feel that. And so the more you can just, and I'm telling you, it took me a while. I was not very good. I was was probably at the bottom of of parent coaches. (laughs) Titans fans, listen up. Open a Titans checking account from Pinnacle with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by August the 18th, and you could win two tickets to five Titans home games. Details at TitansBanking.com. Titans checking from Pinnacle. Play hard. Bank easy. Member FDIC. I've just been handed breaking news, Titans fans. It's official. SeatGeek is now the official ticketing partner of your Tennessee Titans. That's right. The deal is finalized. SeatGeek is the newest member of your Titans family. If you haven't heard the name yet, SeatGeek, you'll be hearing it a lot more this season and for seasons to come. That's SeatGeek. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any live event in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek, the new official ticketing partner of your Tennessee Titans so Titans fans can thank all right so we have to ask you Mike Vrabel with us on the OTP July 4th week we always want to know when you come by and see us for this show what you are streaming on TV what you are binge watching what you are into the OT people want to know yep so we have made the mistake of getting into shows but realizing it's in the middle of the show and then now we have to wait each and every week so we press pause and we are 
I would say by the time that this airs, we will have finished secession. Okay. Because we got into um, my man over there across the pond, um, football coach, soccer coach, Ted Lasso. Yes. Oh, right. Yeah. So we went back and we ripped through uh, those three seasons, I guess. What did you think of the third season? Liked it. Okay. Yeah. Good. I, I like it. You Is know that what controversial? I, I don't. Uh, among Ted Lasso fans, it has been. Well, huh. it, it, I love it. It got. A little, I would say, political. It did, you know, mm. yeah. but yeah. it's Hollywood. It's yeah, ho- so storylines. You need it something. It has a tendency to do that. The but mental I do health message in that is show fit. is I, so. There was it, a lot of parallels. I, I really appreciate watching that show and yeah. thinking, like, okay, well, you know, everybody's on the right track, and just, you know, he doesn't. Nothing's ever really that big of a deal. No, right. And uh, it's a good way to look at it. Not to say that you have to do it that way, but it's it's like, okay, well, we'll be okay. So Secession, Ted Lasso. Yeah, and then we just are now waiting for for new suggestions. Okay. Amy, have you got something? Well, we're going through Secession at home as well, so I'm, I'm on that same track. But we're waiting for season two of Severance. Did you watch Severance? No. Oh. Weird show. It's weird, if but you're it's gonna good. Start, if you're going to start watching Severance, you've got to make it through the first three. Yeah. And, and you're going to think, this is really strange. But after you get through the first three, I, I couldn't make it. My son loves it. Oh, it's, it's his favorite. Yep. It's bananas. Snowfall? I haven't seen it. Haven't seen w- it. Worth it. Really? Okay. It gets slow in the middle seasons. We kind of brushed AJ... It told me this a couple years ago. Hey, check this show out. Third season of Barry was very worth it. Okay. If you if you like Barry, which I loved, it's a good program. It was on HBO. I don't know Barry. Barry mm. is uh, he's a, he's a the um, guy the guy from Saturday Night Live. Uh, Bill Hader. Bill Hader. He's a contract killer who becomes an actor. Okay. And mm-hmm. and, and it and he finds himself as an actor after coming out of the military as a sniper. He becomes a contract killer. That he he hates the job, but he stumbles into being an actor and he finds what he loves. Did you like Dexter? I did. I couldn't get. Th- there was so much to it. There was a yeah, th- and it got a little goofy. Yeah, it got a little strange. Mm. Those I, are hard. I mean, what do you do after six or seven seasons? But I think that's the thing about <sighs> Tendency, Barry. Goofy. Is Barry? They did three seasons with a wrap up. Yep. Ted Lasso, three seasons with a wrap up. I think that's the way to do it. Here's one for you that my wife found. Um, Daisy Jones and the Six. With, uh, what's her name? Riley Keough. That's it. Elvis Presley's granddaughter. Yep. Fantastic show. Hmm. Fantastic show. Hmm. Easy to watch. One, two a night. You'll love it. So this is like set back. It's a Western. No, da- no. Daisy Jones. It's, it's based loosely, supposedly, on Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham coming into Fleetwood Mac. Fireworks. It's, it, it, yeah. It, you'll love it. Daisy the Jones electric. and the Six. I, easy watch. <laughs> Drama, but not, eh, you know. Okay. Hey, Titans fans. Hard to decide what's the best part of a Dunkin' run. Is it the coffee or the classic $1 donut, the $2 stuffed bagel Minis or the three dollar sausage, egg, and cheese that you can add to that coffee, or of course, you just get to leave the office. The answer, of course, is yes. Time for a Dunkin' Run. Great deals on food for one, two, or three dollars with a medium or larger coffee. America runs on Dunkin'. Can we talk football now? Sure. Okay. I thought um, that's what we were going to do. Well, but, I mean, we we don't get to have you on the OTP all the time. I love being this here. This is our yeah. summer program. This is our – It's this, light. It's easy. It's fun. You shook up the offensive staff dramatically. I, I wondered, as that was going on, was that something you went into the offseason looking to do, or did that happen more so because of the people who were available that you were able to fit into the spots? Uh, I think a little bit of both, you know, I mean, I think it was, it was probably time, you know, to, uh, to make some changes and you just get a sense and a feel for, you know, what's, what you're you're trying to do, what's best for the team and best for the players. And, you know, went through a lot of different interviews. I went through a 
a bunch, you know, I mean, 20, 25 different interviews offensively at different positions and got a lot of great ideas, met a lot of great people, a lot of great candidates, um, and, and was able to settle on on the staff that, that we have now, which I think has been, you know, by all accounts, working well. Seems like the communication to the players is good. I think the coaching is good. We've got some guys, you know, moved some guys wrong, brought some other guys in from, from other places, and, and I think it's been really good. In doing all of that shifting and adding and moving and just kind of jostling all those pieces around, do you feel like the chemistry of the group has remained intact or maybe even gotten stronger? The chemistry of the coaching staff? Yes. Or the, um, yeah, I don't think – I mean, those are, those are things that build. You know, I mean, those are things that – that develop and build and you know whether you're adding you know Justin Hamilton and Chris Harris uh low locust you know those are new faces uh, on defense you know with some of the coaches that we've had you know those take a little bit of time Anthony Levine Tom Quinn have been great additions on the special team side and then you know I think the the biggest like Mike said was was offensively but um you know I think I, I like where it's at right now what do you hope that the changes in the secondary with the coaching staff and again, keeping Scott Booker, who I, I know you're also very impressed with, what do you hope that's going to give the, the secondary that it didn't have in 2022? Well, I don't think there was something that it didn't have. I just think that it was good time to, to add, you know, a, a, what we felt like was a really good football coach. I had a lot of knowledge. Um, you know, and in the end, you get, you, there's only two coverages. It's going to be zone or it's going to be man, and you're going to have to cover your guy, and we're going to have to find ways to affect the quarterback. So um, th- there's, there's, um, there's been some energy back there, and we'll have some bunch of young guys again working, and you know, we'll see where this thing shakes out at training camp. But, you know, we, we have to defend the pass better on first and second down, you know, whether we're rushing better or covering better. But we, we played well against the run we played well on third down but just gave up too many yards on on first to second down throwing the football some player moves this off season and one of the additions is Arden Key why is that someone who you felt was a great fit for this program well good energy he's got versatility you know he can play up and down the front he rushes inside he's rushed outside um, you know can drop once in a while if need be and obviously you can't rush everybody so but, you know, has the ability to move around. I've always liked him. Uh, love his personality, his passion. Um, it's been a, been a really good addition so far. We had the opportunity to talk with him not too long ago, and um, he seems like a Mike Vrabel guy through and through. You guys seem like you have very similar personality styles almost, and um, the same kind of approach to the game of football. Is that something that makes maybe your job a little bit easier, having a guy who is established in the league, knows what he's doing on the field, and can also kind of... Well, he brings an energy. He yeah. brings a passion, and, and he's, he's fun to coach. Um, but, but he's got a lot to prove. You know, I mean, th- this, is a, this is a player that, um, you know, hasn't been a full-time starter in this league, and, and we told him that, that we could obviously... Would, would love for him to, to earn that role here, and, uh, and we would help him get there. We would do everything that we could, and um, he was excited about it and has come in and has worked and has gotten in condition, and you know, we're, we're excited to you know, see where that may go. I'm with Amy, I think Arden Key seems like your kind of guy the first time you meet him. Andre Diller doesn't necessarily seem like that because he's so cerebral and he clearly thinks about things, and – it takes a little to pull him out. He told us that when free agency started, he prayed that the Titans would call because he bonded with you during the pre-draft process back in 2019. He felt like you got him, and he looks forward to playing for you in that way. How is it that a guy so different from, say, an Arden Key connects with you in that way and that you connect with him because at some point in time you have to realize that everybody's going to be different and they're going to be they're going to have a unique skill set um and and it's our job to find ways to to reach them to coach them to get the the best out of them and 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 get their best version but clearly different personalities from Arden and Andre and you know Tajay and Derek I mean everybody's different and so you know, we're, we're going to do our best to make a connection with, with the players and find out what it is that, you know, how they, how they function and operate best. 
Jeffrey Simmons is still a Tennessee Titan. We're able to get a contract done with him over the offseason. How beneficial was that not only to the defense and what you guys are going to be doing on the field, but to the locker room, to the overall kind of culture of what the Tennessee Titans are? Well, he embodies everything that we, um, you know, wanted. I mean, he's starting a family here in, in Nashville, and, and it's great to see that um, really become a part of our community and has his family that's moved um, from from Mississippi. And, you know, just his leadership, his attitude, his professionalism, you know, that, that branches out much further than just the defensive line and then the defense and then onto their team. And, you know, guys recognize how he works and his effort and which he plays with and uh, what this team means to him. So I think that that's a, he's a great example for, for all of us. May I ask a Will Levis question? Sure. All right. It's been a couple months since the draft, obviously. There was a lot of tracking of the Tennessee Titans around Will Levis because you took so many people to his Kentucky workout. He was here for a pre-draft visit at Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park. It was obvious that that you had a connection in terms of his skill set. You, you got to know him. You understood what he was about. And then you went and got him at number 33. What was it? Two parts. What was it about Will Levis that you saw and learned through that process that made you think he's a fit? And what have you seen from him just early, I know, that has sort of driven home that point? Well, I mean, I think we all know how valuable the quarterback position is in this league. And, you know, I think we, we saw – uh, what everybody sees, we saw uh, a pro-style quarterback that has size that can um, that can still move. That isn't just a, a statue. I think the quarterbacks are continuing to get uh, more more mobile, you, you, whether you're a running quarterback or not. Um, he's got good arm strength to make all the throws. He understands um, kind of the terminology in which we use and operate. He could be under center. He could, you know operate from from the shotgun he worked in the the play action game worked in the rpo game so just because you have experience with all this doesn't make you you know automatically just going to be uh, uh, amazing but i think that that was a great base um you know and then obviously since he's been here i think he's think he's continued to work and and learn and develop and it's it's a lot you know i mean a, a lot of you know, our defense does a lot of different stuff and shows a lot of different looks and you know, there's been some some really you know positive plays and some positive throws and you know some throws like everybody else that that he'd like to have back and decisions and you know those are things that we'll continue to coach with with him with Malik and and with Ryan. Speaking of a lot, we've heard a lot about Traylon Burks this off season. Are we hearing too much about <laughs> Traylon Burks this off season? Well, I, I don't know you know, what too much is, or I don't know how much enough is. I'm not, you probably listen to it a lot more than I do. Uh, I know that he's been focused. He's been driven. He's been um, motivated, you know, to, to come in and, and really develop and maintain his conditioning and improve his conditioning and his, his strength. I mean, this is, this is a big guy, you know, and he's running, and he's getting in shape. And, you know, this is, this is a big receiver who, continues to, to work and learn and develop the nuances of, of playing receiver in this league. And so, you know, just keep stacking days together and, you know, on top of each other and continue to improve. And, you know, we'll start to add some red zone here. I know we're, we're looking back into the thing. So hopefully the, the red zone installation went well when this airs. And <laughs> I'm hoping that the, that the red zone went well and that, that he'll, he'll maintain that uh, all that hard work that he put in the off season that, that he'll maintain that through those five weeks we talked about. Mike Vrabel, congratulations on being put into the Patriots uh -huh. Hall of Fame. You know what Carter said? What? Seventh time's a charm, Dad. Oh. <laughs> you were a finalist multiple times, but – Seven. I know. <laughs> but you think about this. I mean, let's, let's talk honestly for just, a, for just a second. If you're talking about those Patriots with, let's say, say the Celtics of the 80s. Okay, Maybe Mike Vrabel's not Larry Bird. Maybe you're Robert Parrish. Maybe you're Kevin McHale. I don't know. But at the very least, you're DJ. And to Celtic fans, Dennis Johnson was a big deal. It, it has to be something that when you just take a – Not Danny Ainge. 
you didn't bite anybody, did you? No. no I didn't. Well, Might have just, you can't talk played about a lot things of different like that. I like Danny Ainge, too, but DJ was the glue. I mean, you know. I, Go I, ahead. I get where you're saying. But the point is, <laughs> you think about those teams, what you accomplished, the history of this league, which I know you value, and to have that franchise now say you're one of the greatest to ever play for them, like the Oilers slash Titans, an AFL original who did something very special. I mean, for your understanding of the game, it's got to mean a lot. It, it does. And I think the one thing where I recognized, man, this is pretty cool. Ernie Adams must have told somebody along the way that one year I played 1,000 defensive snaps and 200 special team snaps. And I was like, well, I, I didn't realize that at the time. But, you know, I think that that just, uh, you know, when when you look back at, at being in this thing, this is this is an honor. We're all, you know, have gone on to, to do some really great things because of the time that we spent in New England, and I'm thankful for the Kraft family. I'm thankful for Bill. Um, looking forward to getting up there and, 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 and being a part of that ceremony. You're kind of an NFL celebrity, and it has nothing to do with being the head coach of an NFL team. <laughs> it, it's really true. true. I mean, people talk about Mike Vrabel as – one of the faces of an era of football that we may never see again in our lifetime. I mean, the Patriots were so dominant, and you are one of the names that's associated with that, and yet you never talk about it. Ever. No. You never acknowledge it. I find that remarkable because if that was me, I'd talk about it all the time. I'd wear, I'd have T-shirts printed up. She would. But I really would. But that is just not something that ever – If you would, if you didn't know, you wouldn't know. You know, I, what I did for New England or what I did as a player is not going to help um, our players coming in. That's not going to help me coach them. You know, it may I may be able to explain, hey, so and so or this technique or we did that. But I mean, half these guys, they they don't even half of them. I don't really think realized I played, you know, <laughs> how many of them do you think really don't know that you played? I just said half of them. I mean, you mean that literally? I mean that literally. We should have, you you should go around the locker room. I would love to. Nothing would bring me more joy, actually. I can guarantee you, half of them didn't know I ever caught a touchdown pass, or that you have more career touchdown <laughs> catches than a lot of guys out here put together. Right? That'll now. change. Yeah, That'll yeah. change fast. I just played long. Let's <laughs> not at tight end. You didn't. No, no, a couple years. Could you have played in the NFL as a tight end regularly? Mm. Truth. Truth. Yeah, I think special teams would have kept me around. Yeah. You'd been a three tight end who played red zone and blocked a lot? Oh, I wasn't blocking. No, I, wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't blocking. All right, let's wrap up with this. Will we be able you, – you like to change things up as we know. Will we be able to notice much difference in the upcoming training camp, which is now just three weeks away? I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe. Okay. You know what I mean? I think that what we're trying to do um, – you know, is provide a couple days of work, you know, with with a day of walkthrough, a couple days of work with a day of walkthrough. But, you know, I think that the way that we're going to practice is still going to be upbeat. I think it's still going to, you know, we're going to be moving around. We're going to, you know, do one-on-ones when we can. We're going to spend time in a red zone. We're going to spend time on the fundamentals, you know, open field tackling and and all those things that I believe are, are critical to, to playing good football is playing with fundamentals and, you know, building the, the, the culture of how we want to finish and be able to practice. I mean, great teams practice very, very fast, but they also know how to take care of each other. They keep people off the ground and not taking shots at each other. I mean, you've seen good football teams, mm-hmm. and they practice, and there's a speed to it, but they also aren't taking shots at guys from the side and then going into somebody. That, that, that's, what, that's what dog teams do. Right, they, they don't know how to practice, and guys are on the ground, and they can't get anything done because you're afraid that somebody's going to get hurt. So, part of this off season has been learning how to practice and, and reminding the guys that we have had, but then also the new ones of yeah, practice is important. The timing, the speed, everything that we do at a professional level is critical. But with that being said, we have to do it in a way that takes care of each other, and you know, we we want to compete. But, but we don't want to sit there and, and, and try to, to take advantage of somebody that's in a compromising position. 
Tennessee Titans practices, whether it be in training camp, the off season, during the regular season, they have a specific cadence. They have a momentum. They have a, a speed that you don't always see with other teams or with other head coaches. Uh, Amy, Is that they, something uh, they, you've... They don't let me watch the other teams <laughs> practice, so I couldn't tell you. Well, for some of us who have seen <laughs> other teams practice, I'll let you know, you don't see practices like the Titans very often. Um, is that something you had to work to build here, though? No, no. Uh, I mean, again, we can go back and we can talk about uh, Jarrell Casey, Wesley Woodyard, Delaney Walker. Um, I, I, though, though I know that there's bit there's many more. You know, Ben and Taylor, those guys that were here. Um, but I am thankful that those guys were here and, and they bought in and I've, I've thanked them. I thanked them while they were here. I've, I've thanked them since then. And just, you know, they were, they were pros that they, they wanted to win. They competed so that they, you know, they made things, you know, pretty, pretty easy. You make things easy for us. Thank you so much for the time. We want to shake it, sorry. That, that hand. <laughs> rehab. <laughs> rehab, on rehab. A right flipper. <laughs> I, I'm getting ready I'll for training camp, we'll too. Just do she both gets of them. the double head shake. I got two arms, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> for Amy Wells and head coach Mike Vrabel, I'm Mike Key. Thanking you for joining us for the OTP.